Who's up for the Super Bowl, my friends? On Man 13 on the Wii U. Hi, everybody. It's episode number 82 of this great show called the Time Room Sports Show on WCTV and the High Horn Sports Network. I'm Tommy Maroon, and I'm ready to bring you what should be a good one. Of course, we're going to look at Cavaliers and the Super Bowl. And some video game news. I don't know if you've heard about the video game news. So here are the player stats heading into last night's game. Who's our quarterback? That's I think that's Brady Quinn as our quarterback. Oh ye gods. Colin Saxon leads us with twenty four point one points per game. Andre Drummond leads us in rebounds per game. Oh, I thought it was gonna be another guy. Come on. Andre Drummond with 15.1, Darius Garland, 5.5 rebounds per game. Larry Nats Jr., 2.1 steals per game, and good old Jared Town leads us in rejections per game. Oh, crud, Jamal Charles. 1.8 blocks per game for Jared Town. Such a fantastic basketball player, too. Glad we got him in that trade. Of course, the big old James Harden trade. Yes, I'm playing 15-minute quarters. But yes, it is also in, what do you call it, um, Excel Quack going down to 10. We yeah, Cavs recaps. We beat Detroit 122 to 107. Big win right there. Young boy at 29 is Bennett with a nice hit, and it is nearly picked. Um, Andre had 23.16 rebounds. Toreen, that's right, we talking Toreen Prince, who was starting 16.7 rebounds. Jeremy Grant had 26 points for Detroit. Mason Plumlee, 15 points, 12 rebounds. Detroit was up at the half, but we really got the advantage of them in the second half. They also have more assists and rebounds. Now for a play that everybody knows, because it's only the most broken play in Madden. We're doing the stretch. Did someone order a touchdown? Yes, they did. I could just tell. That's a touchdown right here. Yoink. Or maybe not. Oh, well. Cavs against the Knicks. Gonna go right back to the stretch. We lost 102-81. DG had 24. Young Bulls 17. Jared had 19 points and 9 rebounds. Otherwise, the team did terrible. Oh, where did Doug Martin go? On the halfback stretch. What a first down run right there. Going to get 18 yards. You know what? This game may not be as good as... Wait, that just see mesh. Anyways, I may not be, you know, a fan of this game, but it's still a whole lot better than what we have today. And I'll count my blessings. Emmanuel quickly had 25 points. RJ, that's right, RJ Barrett had 24 and we were up by 10 early on this game. And Doug Moore lost the football, and the O-lineman is there to pick it up. So talk about dodging a bullet. So, yeah, season low for us, 81 points. And JB, that's right, Coach JB Bickerstaff must not have been pleased after that. And he must have been pleased after another loss. This one went to... Minnesota, out of all the teams, also the same night, the Wizards come back to stun the Brooklyn Nets. And we lost at the target center, 109-104. Andre had 22 rebounds and, oh, and 25 points. DG had 70 or 17. If he had 70 points, that would have been insane. Doug Martin got the touchdown. All because I spanned the halfback stretch. I don't even have to pass it. Ah, oh, man, that's something I don't like about Modern Man. Halfback stretch, a win. And Larry, that's right, we talked about Larry Nance Jr. had 16 rebounds, but I think he only had two points. Um, Malik Beasley and Anthony Edwards had 23 points each. D'Angelo Russell from Ohio State, 19 points. Uh, Cavs, we had 12-point lead in the second quarter, but everything really fell apart. It was a close game, my friends. You know, it was also a close game when we faced off against Minnesota again. But this time we won it. 198. Young Bull had 26 points. Jared had 23 points and 18 rebounds, making fantasy owners like myself happy because I won my fantasy league, my friends. D'Angelo had 
were 18 points. Anthony had 13. Anthony Edwards. And we were waiting for most of the game. And it was very close. But yeah, another thing that I was going to talk about was that Andre Drummond was hurt, so he didn't play. And then we lost to the Clippers last night, 129 or 121 to 99. Don't have all the stats for that, but it was still kind of frustrating. Rondé Barber breaks that one up. And you know what? The Cavs are still doing mighty fine. Taking a look at the NBA standings in the Eastern Conference, we are seven, number seven. We'll be playing the Bucks. That's right, the Milwaukee Bucks. Of course, I typically have an outline in my show, but I didn't really finish it uh, this week due to other commitments, including exams. Thank goodness the exams are over. I think outside zone stretcher, same play, but I, it don't matter. Nope, that's a different play. Oh, man, Doug Martin. Doug Martin, what a run. 88 yards. Good Lord, keep on spamming the stretch. Spam the stretch. You do it in any other game um, made in the past 10 years or so. Same result happened. Just trying to adjust the camera. We yeah, have Super Bowl time. That's right. We need to talk about Super Bowl number 55 for the first time ever. A team will be playing in their home stadium for the Super Bowl. That's right. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are home, sort of. As they face off against Kansas City. This is going to be one of the greatest quarterback matchups of all time. That was bad. Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs will be going up against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Who would thunk it? Well, you got to look at each of these teams. Two roads to the Super Bowl. And just like most people, or just like a lot of them, as that run backfires. Good God. Now, I definitely don't want to, you know, try the stretch. Oh, I may want to hit Vincent on this play. There's Vincent Jackson. Boom! First down. Let's go. New 40-yard bomb right there to convert on third down. And 21. Let's go right back to FX stretch. But, yeah, Kansas City Chiefs, as we all know, they were Super Bowl champions last year. And they were heavily expected to really go far again. And well, you know, they did. Lost to Vegas. They lost to LA. But the loss to Chargers was at the end of the season back when they had Chad Henney in. And they were just unbelievable. Just like Doug Martin who punishes his defenders and gets a touchdown. That is number two on the day. All because of the halfback stretch, my good friends. My friends say that the halfback stretch isn't broken. I'm going to zoom in. You need to see the game. You really need to because it's a all right game, I guess one might say. There's your kickoff. I'll be kneeled down. Yeah. And then the playoffs, thanks to the blessings of the referees and ripping us off of a Super Bowl appearance, the Chiefs won without Patrick Mahomes in the second half and... After the game, Mahomes tweeted, hashtag anything is possible, even though Chad Henney didn't play in the AFC Championship game in which they beat the Buffalo Bills 38-21. Josh Allen and Bills Mafia may be a little sad about that, but you bet the next year they are going to be smashing tables and going insane, just like Bills Mafia always does. Hump Jamal Charles with the first down run, even if they don't make the playoffs next year, which... Honestly, everyone's sort of become a Bills fan considering how crazy they are and how fun they are. And it kind of gets me a little nervous. Are they going to be good again next year? Hopefully so. And now here's a pass, and it is incomplete. So, yeah, that's pretty much how it was. Tampa Bay it was a little different. In fact, really different. So, of course, Tampa Bay has been pretty bad over the past few years. Not really any good talent whatsoever whoa one of the wide world of sports was that uh never mind we won't look at the replay whoa that was weird in fact i wanted him let's watch 
That's Brady Quinn. Remember him, folks? Oh, yeah, he throws that one. And it's still a somewhat decent pass. Anyway, so the Buccaneers have been bad for years. Jameis Winston was a quarterback. They say goodbye to Jameis Winston. And then they win the Tom Brady sweepstakes. That's right. Tom Brady was leaving, of course, New England. Where was he going to head to? He said Tampa. Not just that, but Gronk came back from retirement to play tight end there. And they also got Leonard Fournette. And then Antonio Brown as well. And what was the result? Well, the team did really well. Despite getting swept to New Orleans in the playoffs and some people thinking that Tom Brady was washed up or that he couldn't take Tampa to the playoffs. Well, he did just that and then some. They did not win the division as that one went to the Saints. Of course, as previously mentioned, they were partying in their locker room. Literally, as they were, or as they swept the box. But then came the playoffs. It was a big story for them in the uh, playoffs. They played three games unlike Kansas City, and they played three road games unlike Kansas City. The rookie, Don Terry Poe, with the tackle, he was a rookie at the time. And they beat the Washington football team, led by Taylor Heineke. Um, 31-23, and then they upset the Saints. Ooh, not a bad pass. It just was well short. Then I'll take it to the end of the first. It is 14 to nothing. Yes, sir. So, yeah, I'm definitely not going to go for it. But yeah, then they beat the Saints, of course, in the playoffs, and then the Packers at the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. They won it. That's right. They were the winners. 31 to 26, I think, all because Aaron Rodgers didn't decide to run it, which ultimately may have been a bad thing right there. Just a great game. Tom Brady definitely did not look that well in the first or, or in the second half of the game, but the first half he was fantastic. And Tom Brady is like a character that never dies in a movie. He just. I don't know if I don't know how to say it. Um, okay, here's how I compare it. Anyone seen the film Wreck It Ralph once? I've seen it before. Very funny movie. Very great movie. And of course, as we all know, the characters can never die unless if they go outside their video games. In which Fix It Felix Jr. almost had that experience right there. But yeah, as I was saying. Tom Brady is just like one of those characters. He, except for the fact that if he goes somewhere else, he still can't die. He just never dies, just like the characters. Even though they die, they still come back. Tom Brady has had years in which he hasn't won the Super Bowl, and he's still so sharp. Of course, this is definitely going to be a battle of the offense. They met last year, or earlier this year, in which Kansas City walked away with the win. And what was a very tight game between two very good teams of football. In which Tyreek Hill had just a splendid game. Setting a record for most receiving yards in a single quarter. He did not get the record. He had like 200 receiving yards backflipped in the end zone. And though Tom Brady almost came back. The key word is almost. Because as we all know he did not come back. And Bennett comes in and gets the sack. That's his first one tonight. Oh, it has just not been a good one if you are a Kansas City fan, my friends. But then, of course, came, um, or now, here we go. Tom Brady versus Patrick Mahomes. Tom Brady, 43 years young, says he can play till he's 45. I think he'll be playing until he dies, my friends. That guy may never stop playing football. He is that good. So then after that... You have um, his running backs, including Ronald Jones, who had a big 97-yard touchdown run earlier this year. Doug Martin now has over 100 yards tonight, all because I've spammed the halfback stretch. Of course, I'm going to switch teams in the second half. I don't know if you're going to see that. I don't think so, which means that I am going to be on Jamal Charles. That'll be fun. Look at Doug Martin just shrug off defenders. 
Almost as if they are weightless paperweights. Touchdown. Doug Martin, what a run. And so that'll make it 21 0. So, his receivers, of course, include Chris Godwin, great guy. Mike Evans, also a great receiver as well. Antonio Brown, who, after everyone thought his career was over, considering the fact that he's kind of a, or that he was a jerk, I should say. Very self centered. Days of our Steelers from Urinating Tree. And then he has really turned everything around. Looks like he's got his life back on track, on football back on track, and has become a big target there for Tom Brady out in Tampa. And now he's going to the Super Bowl. That is definitely something big for him. And tight end Gronk, of course, one of the greatest tight ends of all time. First, we didn't think he was going to do much, and then as the season progressed, his role got larger and larger and larger. Right, going to try to bring him down. He can't bring him down. It looked like it was 59. Couldn't tell who that was. Is that Levante? I don't think so. Kansas City, we all know what they're all about. Um, their quarterback, good old Patrick Mahomes, a great quarterback who in three seasons as a starter has proven to be one of the best quarterbacks the league has or young talent quarterbacks this league has seen. Is he one of the greatest of all time? I think that's way too early to call. And that's a first down to Dwayne Ball, who just got hurt. That's a stinker, my friends. Anyways, Mahomes, we all know what he's about. Throwing the ball on the run, 80 yards across the field. Just being a fantastic quarterback out there. And then Le'Veon Bell and Clyde edwards alaire as your receiver or running backs. Oh, big catch right there by Steve Breeston. And then your receivers. Of course, there's Sammy Watkins. There's Nicole Hardman. But, of course, the big guy. We all know him. Number 10, the Cheetah Tyree Kill. Definitely one of the best and flashiest receivers in the league. Tony Moeki with the reception. And now Tony's hurt. And that means Kansas State's lost two receivers. Yes. Look at that. Both. Bo and Moakey are out. This is definitely not what Kansas City wanted. And here we go. Looking to throw it. That'll be a first down. Brewston right there. So, yes. um, And or no, Travis Kelsey is a tight end for the Chiefs. We all know who he is. Think he went to Cleveland Heights. And now he is looking to win a Super Bowl. There's going to be a holding call is what it seems. 7.47 is left. And I'm right. I'm always right. So, yes, that's what's going on. And the coaches include Andy Reid and Bruce Arians, two of the best coaches. Of course, Andy Reid used to be Philadelphia's coach, as we all know, from 1999-2012. Got fired after 2012, went to Kansas City, had a few good seasons, but didn't have that franchise quarterback. Enter Patrick Mahomes, takes him to the AFC Championship the first year. Reed puts him at the helm, and then you have winning that follows. AFC Championship game, lost to the Patriots, and then in 2019, of course, the Super Bowl, and in 2020, at least a Super Bowl appearance. Fourth down, looks like they're going to bring on Ryan Suckup, who, of course, is the kicker for the, um, uh, oh, sorry about that. The Buccaneers, and I roughed the kicker. I roughed him. Sorry about that. Wasn't, all right, I forgot. Oh, I got it. I roughed the kicker. That was dumb. Yes, it could be a game changer. So yes, there's that. Bruce Arians was a former Colonels coach. I think he was here in Cleveland as like a defensive coordinator. Don't quote me on that. Of course, like many people, he got out of Cleveland and success followed. And I really wish I didn't hit him in a manner similar to that. <laughs> I'm kind of mad right now. I gave up a touchdown. Of course, that means they're going to kick it from the 40-yard line. It was a running into the kicker there. But yeah... Bruce Arians, coach of Cardinals, took them to the playoffs, almost took them to a Super Bowl, but they lost to Carolina in 2016. 
I remember Bruce Arians retired to became a color commentator in CBS, only to come back from retirement to take over as a Buccaneers coach. Of course, they didn't have that much success at first, and then everybody came, and as we all know, when everybody comes, the party starts, I guess one might say. Just kidding, no one ever says that. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, that's... That's unbelievable. 161 yards, two touchdowns, four minutes or left. Here we go. Josh Freeman may want to snap that. He does, and Doug Martin with a nice spin move, and he only gets two yards. Of course, these two teams have some of the best offenses in the league. If Mahomes is struggling on the air, he can always run it. If he can't um do that he can always hand off to Clyde Edward Dillaire or Le'Veon Bell but it's mainly Clyde Edward Dillaire now days like these make me wish that I did not rough um I'm gonna go with Bucks verticals 161 yards there for Doug Martin there we go I got it off Josh Freeman running there's an open man that's Vincent Jackson again I'll take you to the two-minute warning and what is a 21-7 score out here. Like button, subscribe button, bell icon if you're watching on YouTube. But now my final score. For those that did not watch Highland Girls game last night, shame on you. You should have. But here's the thing. Because the final score was 34-24. The winner was... Highland, of course. So that's why I'm thinking. Kansas City will go back-to-back -back with the win right there. 34-24. They will beat Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. And Patrick Mahomes will join Eli Manning and Nick Foles as the only people to do it in the Super Bowl. Wow. That's what I'm thinking, at least. Of course, NCAA football is back. I want to talk about that, but it looks like we're not going to have enough time. Oh, well, um, obviously I have to. Oh, rats. Thing is, the clock is dying, isn't it? No, it's not dying. There is no um, hurry up Excel clock. Throwing to Doug Martin, and that almost backfires. I'm going to keep the boys on the field here. Just have to go for it. What? No, I'm not doing that. Come on, this is not a stretch. This gets me nervous, but it works anyways. Okay, so yeah, NCAA football is back. Going to be the first time since NCAA 14. And uh, before we go, I'd like to mention the schedule for the Highland Hornets. What the heck was that? Come on, I don't want to spike the ball. That's bad. Anyways, um... Yeah, our schedule is out. First, we play Berea Mid Park. Then, or that's a home game. And then on the road against North Royalton. Well, I'm lucky that one wasn't another sack. That would have been bad. No, I want to pass it here. I know I'm not really a guy that passes it that much in Madden. I'm trying to find something. Here we go, Vincent Jackson, and it's picked off. Come on. Stalker, can't get him, jeez. Yeah, then we play uh, Brunswick, that'll be on the road. Then it's all American Conference teams from there on out. Starting off with the, or with Talmadge, then Barberton, those will be home games. And then road games against Roosevelt and Revere. And that ends at completion streak. Then we play Cuyahoga Falls. That'll be home. And then Aurora. That'll also be home. That'll be senior night. And that ends with Copley. Uh, excuse me if I forgot someone. But that's what our schedule is going to look like. Should be a fun one. Yeah, we got through a lot. I know we lightly touched on the schedule. I know we lightly touched on the NCAA football Series returning to EA Sports, but there just wasn't that much to do. Oh, man. Gonna have to call a timeout right there. Thought I was gonna get it. 
We're going to booth review that. It's still, regardless, nothing because we still call a timeout. And even so, they wouldn't have converted. But yeah, I think that's all. That's going to be for today's episode of the Tommy Maroon Sports Show on WCTV. I hope you like what you are watching because there's going to be a lot more where this comes from in the nearby future. Hopefully I can get back to the studio soon. I don't know when. Not only COVID, but of course I'm kind of busy during the this day and age. I have to admit, I've done a lot despite this COVID-19 pandemic, which is horrible, which reminds me that you should all do your thing and put on your mask and socially distance and all that. Not fun, but stuff that still needs to be done. Because I don't know about you, but I really don't feel like doing this next summer. Hopefully not. Hopefully we can have large sellout crowds like we have in the past for high school football soon. Do I think we will? No. But do I think we'll have a season? Of course we will. So that's going to be it. I'm Tommy Maroon here wishing you a great night. Have some fun.